Hello everyone. Welcome to Curio. Curio is WSO2's latest SaaS application suite. And in my previous video, we talked about what Curio is and what are the different service offerings inside the Curio platform. And in case if you are not able to check my video, please check the description of this video and I will have a link for a screencast where I talk about all the high level capabilities of Curio platform. So as you can see there are five different service offerings so you can call them as products inside the Curio platform and today we are going to talk about Curio API management capabilities so that we can expose an existing service using Curio API management features. So I have a mock API sitting in this URL giving me this response. So I have the backend already developed. I'm going to proxy this API through API management capabilities of Curio and I'm not going to install, I'm not going to download or install or configure any binaries in my local PC and I'm going to use WSO2 SAS application suite to do that. So when you go to console.courier.dev URL, it'll ask you to log in with your email and in case if you have not signed up already, please feel free to sign up using the free tier. Uh, using your personal email ID or per, using your corporate email ID and it allows you to create five components free of, free of charge and when you say components it, it could be uh, an API proxy, it could be an uh, integration service, it could be a, a scheduled task, uh, so whatever we provide as part of the platform you are eligible to create five different components free of charge. And when you log into uh, the Curio platform, you will see in your top right, right hand side, uh, uh, there is a profile already selected. Make sure you are in the API manager profile. And I think I explained all these different profiles last time, very high level. Since we already have the backend service up and running and we are going to only proxy the uh, service through Curio, we are going to go and utilize the API manager profile. But as you already know, and as we discussed in my previous uh, screencast, Curio also provides, apart from the traditional API management capabilities, it also provides the platform for you to develop your actual backend services. So in that case, you can start with either internal developer platform profile or IPaaS profile and develop your backend service and then come back to API manager profile to expose your API. And as you can see, I have already created one component, so I'm eligible to create four more components. So as you can see, I already have one API developed called Hello World. By the way, your screen may look a bit different when you sign up for the first time. Uh, you may have to uh, create a project. Uh, so when you go into the home page, uh, you will see you are signed up into an organization with your name. And in that you will have a project called default project. You can use that or you can create a new project just like what I have done. I have created a new project called learn to try out Corio things. So you can go into the project and inside this project you have uh, one component created. So I'll promise I'll create a separate video to talk about the uh, Corio uh, organization management, project management and team management features uh, uh, sometime later. So today let's uh, uh, talk about purely the API management capabilities in the platform. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to create a new REST API proxy. And when you select create new REST API proxy, you have an option to upload your open API definition or Swagger file. Uh, or you can provide the URL 
and then it will automatically populate the name, base URL, version, uh, and things like that. In case if you don't have an API a definition file, you can always skip that option and then provide everything manually. So let's say greetings API and the base path is greetings API. And let's stick to version one. And I'm going to take this URL, specify here as my target URL. And then you have two access modes. External allows you to access this API publicly. And when you say internal, then this API is accessible only for the users within the organization, within the Corio platform. So let's keep it as external and create. And, and remember, you don't have to do all these things manually. Uh, if you have a Swagger definition, open API definition, and you can just upload or point to the URL, and it will automatically fill these details for you and you can make changes. So let's say create. Now it's creating the service proxy um, using the Corio uh, 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 platform. And once it is done, it will take you to this screen where you can see all the resources. So we are in the resource page and you can see we have a component called Greetings API inside the Learn project inside my organization. and also, you can create new uh, uh, operations, select the HTTP verb, provide the URI pattern, just click add. Uh, and also, you can uh, uh, customize the existing operations. Uh, let's say I want to add a, a parameter, uh, and it's a query parameter called name or something, and, and the date type is string and it's mandatory so you can do uh, uh, all these things using this interface and you can hit save and also you can go to api definition tab and then you'll be able to see the generated open api definitions for this particular api uh, and you can import a definition uh, uh, using this option and you can edit directly in the screen you can download the definition and share with someone else and you can convert to JSON as well if you want. And if you go to policies, so as you already know, uh, most of the API management KPI, API management platform, apart from proxying the API, it also allows you to do some message transformations on the fly. Uh, things like converting JSON to XML, XML to JSON, uh, and uh, logging some additional information, adding some custom headers, things like that. So here, using this policy step, you can attach policies to individual operations. Let's go to get, and then you will see the request, response, and error uh, 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 paths, uh, flows, and you can attach a policy. You can go to request, Flow and then you can say attach policy and then you will be prompted with a set of built-in policies. Uh, you can use one of these policies. Let's use log me uh, a log message policy, and we can add uh, these two details, payload and header, in, into a log message. Uh, and similar to that, you can add another one. So you can keep on adding uh, uh, different policies, and those policies will be executed in the same order. Uh, uh, that you define here and then you can save uh, and then you can go to uh, endpoint tab so you can see the endpoint we have already given and, and there is a sandbox uh, uh, option as well which is optional so if you want to provide a sandbox URL for your developers you can specify uh, a different sandbox endpoint URL using this entry so once you're happy with your configuration uh, uh, and once you go through uh, this resource configuration uh, and, and if you're making any changes using the API definition uh, tab and if you are attaching any mediation policies, when, when you go through all these configuration steps, what you can do next is go to deploy tab and then you can configure uh, uh, in your build area, you can configure the deployment. So when you 
hit configure and deploy here in right hand side you will be able to see what's going to happen behind the scene uh, so basically it's going to generate uh, the application and required scripts to deploy this component uh, into your development environment so <clears throat> as you can see there are two environments here development and production so with your free tier you will be given only two environments called development and production but if you are going ahead with an enterprise uh, subscription and if you are going ahead with a private data plane where you are going to deploy Corio into your own Azure or AWS or, uh, or Google Cloud then you can have as many number of environments defined uh, you can have development, UAT, testing, production uh, you can have any, any number of environments defined so with the free tier you have only two and as we can see currently it's generating the code and building and then uh, finalizing the deployment so now uh, it's partially completed you have the green tick and, and you will be prompted again this endpoint configuration options the reason being now you are about to deploy your component to the development environment so maybe the endpoint you want to configure when you are moving to development environment may be different to what you are using uh, uh, in the design stage. So if you want you can change it, I'm not going to change that and you can say save and deploy. Now it's initiating the deployment, so it's going to push my component uh, uh, from this build area to development environment. So let's uh, give it a minute uh, so it's as you can see in your right hand side it's deploying the inter interceptor app and uh, so basically uh, it's going through a ballerina build and uh, the initialization ballerina build and preparing the choreo files and it's actually generating a docker uh, 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 artifact as well uh, and then it's moving to deployment stage once the build is completed. Okay, so it's committing changes and uh, deploying the application. So in a in uh, in, in few seconds, you will see uh, uh, the green status saying deployment status is active. Um, and it will show you for, for how long it's been running now and if you want to stop this environment you can stop using the stop button uh, and you can test your component so when you click test your component so what will happen is basically it will take you to this test tab so in the test tab uh, you can choose your environment so we are in the development environment and it's already deployed and it's active and running so you can test your operation so let's go to get operation and i have already got one test test key if you want you can regenerate it let's use the existing one let's say execute and you will see the exact same output uh, i'm getting from the mock service and if you move to production you don't see anything here because you have already you have deployed only to the uh, development environment and you are yet to deploy your component to the production environment um, and not only this open api console in build, con in build console you can also use a curl command and you can also generate a postman collection uh, and and then import it to postman tool and you can try out your api uh, so once you're happy with the functionality then what you can do you can go back to deploy uh, 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 page and now you can say promote again you will be prompted with an endpoint because it may be a different endpoint that you want to configure for the production environment uh, let's stick to the same thing 
and then I'll say promote. So now I'm moving my component from development to a production. Uh, so in a few seconds, you will see, uh, you get a green status over here as well. Um, and then you can start testing your API. So you can see the, the deployment is active and it's been running for the last 12 seconds and um, if you want you can stop this environment as well. Uh, so let's uh, go to test and if you see if you change the environment to production that's you will be able to test the production endpoint as well. So we are getting the same result. So now my API is uh, a promoter to production. So what you need to do next is go to manage. So when you go to manage, uh, you will be given the overview page. So you see the development and production endpoints. In my case, both are same, but in some situations it could be different. And it will show you the lifestyle, lifestyle status is still created. I haven't promoted to publish state. Um, by default, we use OAuth as the security and it uh, supports only bronze usage plan. Um, so you can go to usage plans option over here. You can pick and choose uh, a different usage plan. So currently we have only these usage plans, but the more usage plans can be created uh, 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 in the future. So I have attached an additional usage plan. Let's go back to overview. So you see, I have two usage plans now. Um, and you can also go to documents option and you can create a document uh, here. Uh, how to use greetings API. And you can enter some content. Right? You can say test content. And you can save. So I, have, I can create more and more documents uh, related to this API. Uh, so documents will come really handy when you're exposing this API to outside world so they can learn about your API. Uh, so we covered the usage plans already. And then when you go to permissions, uh, we can create scopes. So we haven't created any scopes. We'll, we'll touch scopes at a later stage. And let's go to settings. And here you can see I have already selected access mode as external and API visibility, however, is private. So you can configure it as public. Say switching the API visibility to public will always will allow anonymous users to view the API details by visiting organizations develop a portal. So that is fine. I want to make sure everyone can, to my, can come to my uh, developer portal and see what are the APIs I have publish but in case if you don't want this API to be visible for anonymous users you can make it as a private so let's um, also spend some time you can see here I have two environments uh, and uh, I have options to enable course configuration uh, uh, also if you go to resources it will show you all the different resources here um, and uh, Let's go to the properties. You can add some business information if you wish. So when you're done with all these configurations, what you can do, you can go to lifecycle tab. It is in the created state. You can say publish. And when you're publishing this API, it's also asking and, and allowing you an option to create a connector. I think I already explained in my previous uh, video a connector is a way of reusing your component, reusing your services, reusing your APIs so that other developers can easily uh, uh, consume your uh, services, your APIs uh, through this connector concepts. Connector will be available in a, uh, a marketplace where developers can come and they can start connecting their applications uh, 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 with your services. So, for the moment, I'm going to say no, um, I don't want to create a connector. We'll talk about connector story uh, 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 on a different video. Uh, all what I want to do now is just to expose this API and uh, view that in my developer portal. So the API is published. 
in few seconds right uh, now api is ready for us to consume so let's go to our uh, developer portal so when you go to devportal.coria.dev uh, you will be taken to the uh, uh, dev portal so when you uh, there are two uh, there are two options apis and applications if you are familiar with our uh, okay let me sign in again uh, if you are familiar with our traditional uh, api management product uh, we have these two options as well uh, apis and applications so uh, when you select browse apis you will be taken to api option over here so i have two apis this is the one i created now uh, and if you go to applications it will show you what are the applications you have so application is the way to consume or subscribe to your apis and uh, uh, and and integrate with your uh, applications so let's uh, uh, explore this api um, greetings api uh, you can see it's a REST API version 1 and this is the endpoint uh, and you will be able to see development and production endpoints here uh, and what are the operations uh, and there is one document under documentation section no scopes we haven't specified any tags uh, if you go to uh, contracts uh, uh, okay, we need to generate credentials view contracts. So, so what we'll do is we'll go through the rest of the tab. So, if you go to SDKs, the platform is providing four SDKs for you for these three languages uh, and and JMeta as well. If you go to documentation, so this is a document I have. It's just one document. If you have multiple documents, you will be able to see all the documents here in this tab. So now what I want to do is I want to try out this API, right? So in order to try out API, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to application step, create an application. Let's say uh, greetings app. Uh, and you can select the per token quota. Uh, let's go with 10, create. So now it has created the um, applications for me. Uh, it uses JWT token. Uh, and if you go to subscription, there are no subscriptions at the moment. So you can say add API. So this is how you are going to associate APIs with this application. So there are two APIs. I'm going to associate greetings app, uh, greetings API using Bronze usage plan. <laughs> and then um, once this association is done, uh, what you can do is you can uh, uh, go to API uh, and then you can go to tryout option uh, you can pick whatever the endpoint you want to try out right let's stick to production it's fine because it's the same endpoint and which application you want to use currently I have subscribed to this API only using this application and then you can get a test key and you can try out the API. So this is how application developers you get the exact same result. This is how application developers come to your developer portal uh, and and go through the existing APIs, create an application, subscribe to that API using the application, generate a test token, and try out the API using development or production uh, uh, URLs or endpoints. Uh, so this basically um, uh, 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 the developer portal uh, feature in the Corio API management uh, uh, platform and, and by the way you can uh, customize the look and feel of this developer portal the way you want. Uh, so there are a bunch of uh, uh, options you can uh, customize the look and feel. Uh, so let's let's go to uh, uh, Curio uh, Developer Portal homepage, and if you go to Browse APIs, uh, currently you have only one tag. So if you 
associate more tags, then you will be able to filter your APIs using those tags and you will be able to use this global search. Uh, so you can search if you have like 100 or APIs, then it will be very difficult to go through all the APIs page by page, then you can easily uh, do a global search and you can uh, locate your APIs. So this is the developer portal uh, capability in the Corio API management platform. Uh, so let's go back to uh, Corio platform and uh, a few things, few additional things I want to show you. Uh, if you see here, there is another tab called observe. So by going into observe, uh, you will be able to get all the details about your API usage. Um, let's give it a moment. So as you can see here, uh, currently I'm looking at the greetings API and it will show you the log. Uh, so you can look at old logs and you can look at the latest logs and you will be uh, able to see uh, uh, I think I added a custom um, uh, log policy uh, to log my payload and uh, header so you'll be able to see all that information uh, over here and, and not only that you can basically uh, look at the details by the API version by the environment uh, so you can choose the environment uh, and the time frame uh, also you can search for a specific keyword as well um, and, and not only that you can download your uh, log into a zip file so in that zip file you have text uh, uh, text page log, uh, log file where you can uh, go through to troubleshoot and to get some uh, additional information so you can uh, switch between these tabs whenever you want uh, you can as you can see there's one consumer now because i have consumed to this con uh, already consumed this api through one one application uh, and you can uh, go through all these tabs and you can go through the same workflow over and over and again uh, if you want you can make some modifications to api definition again save and then come back to development and then move it to the, the development environment and once it is tested move from development to production uh, you can promote uh, and you can also change the life cycle as well uh, life cycle state as well so all these capabilities are, are provided uh, through the SaaS uh, uh, application suite called Curio so you don't have to download, uh, or install, or configure uh, anything uh, in order to get uh, these API management uh, capabilities. Uh, so let's um, look at a few other uh, uh, things in, uh, in the upcoming videos. Uh, for example, I'm going to show you next time how to convert this uh, uh, API uh, into a connector and reuse uh, uh, through the uh, marketplace and also I'll show you how to use uh, uh, iPads or internet de in internal developer platform to create the actual backend service uh, as well uh, using the Corio platform and then proxy that as, a, uh, as an API to outside world uh, and there are a lot more features um, in the platform uh, so it will take a while for you to grasp all these features. Uh, uh, it, it's, 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 it's a feature-rich platform uh, which provides API management, iPaaS, uh, DevOps and, and cloud-native development capabilities. Uh, so I'll see you again uh, uh, in the future uh, through another screencast. Thanks.